Welcome to a new video in the Arch Linux and Linux series. Today we're going to talk about the text editors Vim, NeoVim and AstronVim. We're all used to Windows all our lives. We're used to the graphic overlay of software, like the text editor. We write our text files and normal text and batch scripts in the text editor software and we exit the text file by the red cross in the corner. Now we've installed the operation system Linux. There's the terminal and that's it. So we need to install the text editors Vim, NeoVim or AstronVim to write the code, scripts and text. In the last video we installed apps on our system. And to configure these apps we need the text editor because on Linux every configuration is a text file. A short disclaimer. If you like this type of video and you want to support our channel, consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. It would help a lot. You can also join our newly created Discord where we'll share updates on our recent uploads and tech news. Now back to the video. Let's get into installing these editors. What exactly is Vim? Vim was created in 1991 and it wanted to be the successor of VI. After that, it was omnipresent in the Linux space, creating a fast, reliable, powerful and small tool on your terminal. If your system ever boots in the recovery mode, you only have Vim at your disposal. Other than raw text manipulation, Vim also serves you with a whole lot of comments you can use to streamline your workflow. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of using Vim. Vim is a keyboard centric software. So you will be met with a lot of key binds you can use to make your workflow really fast. But that is also its biggest disadvantage. Vim has a very steep learning curve, making it easy for beginners to use the software, but it's very hard to master it. You will meet Vim at almost any Unix system. But you can use distributions like Ubuntu, which has a graphic interface. There will be a text editor like Windows. Vim is a very great tool for developers, system administrators, and it supports macros, system automation, and scripting. But an additional drawback would be that Vim can be customized so deeply that it will be very time consuming to go through all the documentation. So if you're used to the fancy IDEs like Visual Studio, Eclipse or JetBrain products, you will be likely disappointed because it doesn't have the GUI features you're used to. Other than installing Vim or its successor NeoVim like we're doing in this video, you will also encounter the Vim software when you want to establish a remote connection via SSH or you want to make quick file edits on files that are on a server or you can use Vim as a coding environment like we talked earlier but I would recommend to install some plugins beforehand. So now we're going to go over on how to install Vim, how to use it and configure it. So to install Vim type in sudo hackman-s vim. Type in your password and press Y. Now you've installed Vim. To create a new file or open a file with Vim, type in Vim and the file name like editor.txt. Now we've created a text file. I already have the editor.txt file, so it opened it. So we're in the text editor. To go and write something into the file, press I on the keyboard. So you're in the insert mode. Now you can write your text into the file. If you want to leave this mode, press escape. Now you're in the standard mode. You have the ability to use many comments that Vim provides to you. Now you can save the content of this file and exit by pressing colon W Q. And now you've exited the editor. Now that we've installed and used Vim, 
we're going to look at on how to configure it. Configuring Vim can be a very time consuming activity. So in this video, we'll look at a very basic setup. If you want a more in-depth configuration, we'll make another video on that topic. So Vim can be configured on a system-wide context and a user-based. Vim should only be edited in a user-based context. You create your own configuration file on your user folder. So we'll type in Vim dot vimrc as you can see i already have a basic setup uh, the first line is no compatible that means the file is not compatible with vi i don't really need that the other important lines are set number as you can see my lines are starting with a number and the cursor line and cursor column is just where is my pointer i forgot to mention that if you're in the standard mode and you want to use a comment you have to always start with a column so to write and quit the file press column w q now we've talked about how to install use and configure vim if you want to go into a more in-depth tutorial vim is offering you the comment colon vim tutor and you can read for yourself. So after Vim was created, it faced some architectural problems. There, new Vim was published. It offered a modern and refactored fork of Vim. It's full compatible with Vim and offers exclusive new tools. Its official release in 2015 marked a very important step for the Linux community. Its goal was to aggressively refactor the architecture of Vim. It created a better plugin ecosystem and it supported more modern code tooling. Vim only supported the Vim script plugin language, while new Vim supported Lua, Python, and additionally Vim script. It also supported asynchronous jobs. So the last step of this video would be to install NeoVim with you. But before we do that, I want to talk about AstroNVim. AstroNVim is a NeoVim distribution. It offers you a pre-curated set of key bindings, plugins and themes on top of NeoVim. It features a full developer setup especially for those who don't want to spend weeks or even months setting up their own configuration. It uses Lua to edit its configuration and the lazy.nvim plugin manager. Now we're going to finish this video by installing AstraNVim. AstraNVim is a distribution of NewVim and a GitHub repository. So we clone the repository with git clone and it will save its content in .config and Vim. If you've already installed NewVim previously, you might want to save the content of this folder somewhere else. Uh, but if you don't need the configuration, you could just remo remove the folder via this comment. So just press enter and you can clone it. You can start NewVim with NVim and press enter. There you can start a new file, find files or open your recent files. I've already started a file. This is a Java program and it recognizes it as a Java file and it has the syntax of a Java file. So yeah, uh, you can also install a language parser or a debugger by using colon to, to write the comment and dub install is a debug install for python for example yeah now it's installing a python debugger yeah so you can experiment with astra nvim yourself and now you know all the text editors there there are on linux and have fun with experimenting <laughs>